Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to be doing a video on working on this 33 three window project that we uh, did a walk around on last time. Uh, last couple of videos we did a walk around, and then we did the, uh, the sub rail. So we are ready to start uh, fitting the body, and I'm actually shooting the intro after the work's done because I didn't know how it was going to go. So, a little sneak peek right here. So, anyways, uh, we're going to be working on seeing what we can find uh, for the suspension, get it all set up, get the rear end hopefully put together and in and try and figure out what we're doing for the rear suspension and front suspension and how all these parts that I bought over the years, past year rather, for this car uh, are going to jive with the work that was already done and the chassis that's on it. So it should be a fun one. Um, it's definitely going to be a lot of work, so enjoy. I just have two in. Did I not bring them over even? That's why I was asking. I don't think you did. Yeah, brother. Well, there's so much down there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cool. Walk away. <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to just pick up on the wheel and we'll drag it. There we go. Now we're in there. I'm just going to grab two rags and slide them on those tie rods. Yep. Just one for you. Let's wrap it around. Just drag it. So if you want to grab one hand on this here, yep. and then we'll just, with the other hand, roll it up. Pull your end back. So. That's, close. That's close for now. Now we can readjust. if these split wishbones were exactly right, but they're close. Right. So I may be able to just readjust the brackets and make them work or make new ones. But cool. They look, at least on my side, it looks, it like looks real close here. It looks like it. Mine looks like it's too long. Oh, really? This the, axle, is, the axle could be. This is a little past, but. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think you can turn the tie rod in enough. Okay. On mine. But we'll have to see. Yeah, yours looks a lot closer. So maybe if I, the axle's just a little. Yeah, a little closer. tweaked. So, get that straightened up. But that looks cool. Heck yeah, it does. Chrome drum, and whole shebang. That's a lot of damn chrome. <laughs> uh, old crappy chrome, I love it. Perfect. Yeah, that, that, that's just freaking nice. awesome. I've had a day, Mike. Don't be, don't be mean to me. You know what I've been through today? No, but Steve does. <laughs> he does. He watched me struggle all day. Now, the only problem we're going to have with this is when we set it down, it's going to want to, because the spring behind. Well, it's going to catch in that, that thing there. And then we can put a clamp on it. Okay. We had the same problem with free tea. Ready? Oh, oh. oh there's a stud there. Ready? Slow move. Too much. That 
axle is going to kick. Yeah, I know. I'm just getting it seated. Do you have those blocks of wood, Steve? Yeah. Just for the official, the official tool. It's gonna throw us. We had this problem on the free tee. The axle wants to kick because of the there's no wishbone right, or anything. It's just the out. cheap shackles we had on it actually broke as we were trying to set the rear in the car. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so I spent a little bit of time taking the putting the front end together and uh, putting the rear end together and in the car. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt. I went ahead and did a bunch of work off camera that we've shown in a ton of other videos like doing the kingpin bushings and all that different stuff. We got all these neat chrome parts on here. Uh, pretty important for me to get all the parts I'm going to be using on here so that we can make sure everything jives when we're going forward. Only thing I don't have on here is I have a spring that is just a little too short and I threw longer shackles on just to get me uh, so that I can get this thing together. So I'll be ordering another spring. I couldn't find a spring whatsoever um, That will be correct because the you can tell it's too short because it's like this and even with me standing on it The it doesn't get down to closer to a 45 like it's supposed to be so got that all together We got the rear end together um, We ended up finding out that the rear end with this Franklin quick change uh, actually you can use a stock style spring so we have uh, 46 to 8 bells and axles on here that are longer to get the tires outside the body and we were able to use this spring because the Franklin uh, actually has this rear end quick change housing is set down so that it gives you clearance for the spring so as we we're starting to mess with swapping parts around to put that T-spring on we had figured out that we don't need it so that's a nice thing with these Franklin quick changes the way they made them it actually sets it down just a little bit lower and uh, gives you that clearance so you can run a normal spring and not have to do the cross member stuff. So right now we just have some clamps and stuff temporarily set up so we can roll the chassis. Next thing I need to figure out is these rear wishbones. So you can see we have this one just kind of like roughly set on there. There's these old chrome split radius rods that we have and uh, we were kind of playing with like where do we mount them. We have another one sitting there. Um, so we need to figure that out but I quickly realized if we're going to put them out here we need to set that body back down on and see if it's going to hit where the radius ride comes back. Um, when I built my Model A Coupe, the uh, Pagoda City Coupe, I actually forgot about that and we were putting the body back down and you were driving and ended up, it was hitting here and I had to clearance the wheel well. So I wanna make sure we don't have that issue where it doesn't totally interfere. I'm hoping not on this car, um, but we will see. So we're gonna set the body back down, slide it in, and then we can start seeing where everything's gonna set. Um, we just gotta roll this chassis forward first and then we can roll the body back over and uh, and see how it sits. It'll also be a fun thing to do just uh, after all that kind of BS work. We can see how cool it's going to look. Over there? Other side? Other side. Yeah, I'll go over here. Push your end. Push your end that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can spin it in our end. We can spin it in our hoist. I forgot. Uh, no, you're right. It'll probably be a pain in the ass when we Oh, my bad. Good over here, yeah. You can spin on the hoist, but that, with the weight on it, ends up being a pain in the hoist. Oh, okay. Twist the chain more than you do. Yep. There we go. Try and use that all-inclusive strap this time. <laughs> if you can catch it. <laughs> oh. That's that must have been what I did last. Here, hook it on the other one. Oh, yeah. Like professional riggers here. <laughs> professional idiots. <laughs> hey, it looks it looks impressive. Right. I don't care what anybody does. It looks impressive. Anytime you can get that many straps on one body. And then it lifts, it lifts straight, then it's like, okay. <laughs> if it looks crooked, then you just look at it. 
<laughs> Probably good to uh, pick up the back end as we get there. I'll push if you want to just pick that back end up a little bit. Oh, gotcha. Going that way. See half a bolt hole through the second one there. I just want to shove up. Yep, that one's pretty close. Just shove a bolt through it just to keep it kind of honest. Mm -hmm. you know. And then the ass then we can, although maybe I want to leave them out. I do. Oh, so you can set it back in? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to lift, we're going to actually lift the ass end up oh, with, possibly. Right. Yep. I like where it's heading. So here, just stand on this end. Yep. And we'll go up like two clicks. Two. Okay, and now let's check it. That's getting better. I think it could go up even more. I don't know. I don't want too much wheel gap. No, that's true. Yeah, you are. You got a pretty good wheel gap now. Right. The front edge of the body line there, you have a good. A yeah. good gap at the front of the rear tire. Yeah. There. So if you go up another couple clicks, it's going to really right. It, it's and, gonna, it won't yeah. be even anymore. And we're going to go down in the front. Oh, with, right. With suspend with uh, engine in it. So yeah, that is looking. That's looking that's pretty good. So I think if we went, it's hard to do it. But I was going to say, I wonder if we could go down one click. Actually, let's go up one more click and see. I'll do mine first. <laughs> so, sometimes more of a bit is better. Okay. That's a 
centered in the windshield but again that's like no padding well you also have the option of laying the seat back yeah you know depending I, I don't know how that comfortable that would be for you or yeah it's all about putting a bolt you could put a bolster in your under your leg yeah that's the key because I think it would look pretty cool like this yeah, because you just get your head in there and you just got your knuckles up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the right spacing right there. I just got like no seat padding again. No. Uh, and this, this car, the problem you're fighting into is the X member. Center X member mm -hmm. is what's throwing your... Right. Unless I can get... Well... No, I'm too far over. I want to be, I'm sitting like right where that X member comes in. Mm -hmm. Man. It's good that my head doesn't look like I'm, you know, if I'm about centered in it. And sight wise, I'm, um, yeah. Your, your head centered in the back window, it's centered in the side window. Okay. You, you don't look out of place. Okay. You know, sitting there. That's yeah, it. that's the one thing in my, my Model A coupe, the seat's yeah. too high, and I sit up, like, up in it. Right, okay. So, you feel like you're sitting too high, not that the car's too low. Yeah. The seat's actually pushed up too high. Right. This is going to be the same problem. It's going to need, like, a, basically just a cushion, you know, Oh yeah. I might need to make like a seat, a sheet metal base instead of a. Oh, right. You can make it instead of a thin. yeah, because you can make it thin. And yep. You can just make a cushion that slides into it, like a like a bomber seat yep. type deal. Mm -hmm. It's probably how I have to do this one because every little bit's going to count. That's where he ran into the problem on that. He wants to, he always wants to staple and wrap and do all stuff. So he wants wood, and I'm like, well, you, you got to have like three quarter inch plywood to, to do that and that right. causes an issue so yeah. whatever he did on that seat seems I like that he put the he put the convertible top underlaying material that's like stretchy mm -hmm. so when you sit in that thing it actually like sinks down any cut he cut holes in where your ass is in the seat right. in the wood yeah so then you actually sink down into oh, that okay, plywood yeah. with the foam right. so yeah that's pretty worked out pretty nicely mm -hmm. all right so we got the body all mocked up and uh, we needed to do this to kind of figure out how far the body was going to get channeled down um, for the look we're going for so we could take some measurements and also mainly we were trying to figure out how we were going to fit the radius rods in and get them all to work so what i wanted to do was use here walk around back here Got clamps all over the place. So what I wanted to use was the radius rods would mount like out here in the stock location. But what we found is the radius rod was going to run right into the body right here. So it's it, with how it's channeled, that's not going to work. And probably that's how those things were set up for a car that was like a high boy that they wasn't a problem that it would be out towards the outside of the frame. So what I have set up was kind of our alternative thing. We were doing is you can see we have it mounted in here so what I'm going to need to do is make some tabs much like people do with the uh, with a 35 36 radius rods and mount you know right in here where I have it just wired up make some tabs and mount in there and then uh, up in here where you can see the tie rod is up in there somewhere I'm going to have to make a mount that's going to come off of the um, off of this X member section. So that's kind of, we had to set the body down just to get an idea of where everything was gonna sit. I'm glad that we did that because if I would've went forward with the other way, where it was mounted to the outside like stock, 
uh, with these, it would have ended up just hitting on the body and was not gonna work. We would have to chop the wheel well all up. So doing it this way will definitely work out. Um, I took all my measurements over here. So we got the body all sitting flat and even. This is my kind of crude drawings here. So we figured out how high the body was sitting in the rear, right up to this seam and then to the, to the um, center door hinge or the lower door hinge and then there's a bolt hole here at the front of the cow. So what we ended up doing, what we got dialed in on is a wedge channel. So uh, much like a wedge chop, a wedge channel, you start with it um, channeled much, not much, but it's channeled further in the front than it is in the rear. So it, in the end, what we, what we were doing is we actually ended up putting this back down to where it was sitting in the front when I first got the car. So we put it back down to the bolt hole for the mount that was right there. And that just gave it that attitude that we were looking for. So in the rear, we ended up actually raising the back end up quite a bit. This thing was channeled down probably evenly. And where that bolt hole is, that was like way down, probably right in about here. So we, we raised the rear end probably a couple inches, two, three inches maybe in the back, and that just gave us that look we were going for. Um, the wheel well opening matches the tire really, really nicely, the radius of the tire, so everything looks really good here. And then this back end, the shot is just freaking awesome. So we were sitting here eating lunch, just staring at it. It's really cool, but you can, hard to see with the garage door open, but the uh, quick change is peeking out underneath of there, um, pulling the wheel wells in so this car the way they had everything flopping around, these wheel wells weren't, they were like way out here. So when we clamped these to get the body to stay in place, it pulled this whole quarter back into shape. It was like bulged out and it was like almost, when I got this car, the wheel, the wheel well like here was like touching the tire because it was pulled out from those wheel wells being loose and just floating around all these years. So by doing that, it pulled everything in. We have a nice clearance here. You have to run this later rear, or you don't have to, but the reason I ran this later rear, uh, the 46.8 rears that are like the widest banjo rear, is it gives you that room that you have room to get your wheel and your tire outside of the wheel well. So that if you, you know, with suspension travel, you're not banging on the tire at the front here. So a bunch of stuff that just took forever to get together, but we finally got it kind of mock mocked back up and it is sitting exactly how I, envisioned it. I'm really, really happy. So that is uh, another update on this. So next time what I'm going to work on is getting those rear radius rods, um, mounts made for those and getting those sitting in the frame and, uh, and kind of bolted in that will lock the rear in its place so that we got the, the, uh, everything set up really nice and the pinning angle pretty much about locked in where it's going to go. And then we can start working on making this body saw, which is going to be a nightmare, but we will get it done. So thank you guys for watching. Really, really appreciate it. It's a long road ahead, but we're at least hopefully going in the right direction. Thanks guys. Catch you later.